Uh, but before we get uh, underway, we have to do it this way now since we're in separate locales. Although I got to golf with my boy and hang out with him all weekend. Corey Clark, his wedding to Stephanie could not have been better. Really good times. How are you, sir? Uh, tired, but uh, but good. We're good. 6 a.m. flight, man, comes early. The, the good thing is that uh, stayed at Hotel Indigo, our friends at Hotel Indigo, yeah, yeah, yeah. not that far from the airport. So the wake-up call wasn't terribly early. But, uh, yeah, it was 3 a.m. hour, and uh, we walked through the door about 45 minutes ago. So, yeah. We'll do it, baby. We'll make it happen. It's all right. It's all right. And hello to all of you in the uh, chat. We appreciate you. The Heisen Lincoln Law Firm chat, I should say, and appreciate that very, very much. Saw some of you. I see you guys. Uh, some of you were at the wedding. Yeah, we had a good time. I'll just let you guys know out there. You guys follow the War Chant family. Uh, it was uh, it was good. We had a good time at uh, Corey and Stephanie's wedding. Congratulations to those two. It was a, a good time. A lot of smiles. A lot of smiles for everybody involved. And since I love both those people, I was happy to see their happiness. And also getting to run into so many people uh, that I've gotten to meet over the years, either through mutual friendships or, in fact, just working here at War Chant and being in the business that we're in, Tom. So we saw a lot of people that are always pleasant to talk to and kind of catch up with. And obviously, uh, it was it was a fun occasion. So we hope they're off having fun. Uh, they, hopefully, they're not paying attention to sports. Go do whatever you're going to do and have some fun with it. Uh, I don't even know what they're doing, Corey and Stephanie, but they're certainly not doing it here at War Chair right now. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I think one of the big things for them, obviously, is the Ireland trip. They're doing it like a lot of the folks in the chat are, or if you're listening on the air of the podcast, like they're making it a thing. Uh, I know actually two couples who are treating it as their their honeymoon. So I think that's uh, that's going to be probably the big shebang but it was uh it was like spirited in such a good way from start to finish uh, there was a bus service that took everybody to and from the corner pocket if they opted into that mm -hmm. a giant astro bus with a badass driver named mr b hope mr b's listening but mr b was nifty with a giant machine he could get that thing I in watched there. Back that sucker into the hub that was amazing he i was, was impressed yeah exceptionally smooth mr b was a good driver uh, so by the way, if, if, if you guys are going over to Ireland to watch Florida state play football, first of all, I think as an aside, I think that game might be pretty good. Georgia tech played well on the back half of this in the back half of the season last year, kind of looked like a team that was well coached and knew what they were doing a little bit there late. So that game may end up being, especially with all these new pieces to the puzzle for Florida state. Yeah, that game could be decent. I hope not. I hope we win by 60. I hope the folks in Ireland are bored to tears as we're hanging out uh, and, and, and watching in a pretty cool location. I've had the pleasure of having been over there to the stadium, Aviva Stadium, and walked the grounds. Really not a bad seat in the house. This is not a sell job by me, but if you're going over there, you're contemplating it. I love Ireland. I've been to Ireland twice now. This will be the third time that I'll go to Ireland. I actually did my honeymoon in Ireland uh, that was 19 years ago. Uh, but, but yes, uh, good times. I love the place. The people are awesome. Uh, there's a lot to do. You and I will be on the grounds broadcasting for several days before that football game is played. Oh, man, I cannot wait for that because the, the weather, too, that part of the year in Ireland is like that's their time. It's July and yeah. August is, is go time. So I'm looking forward to that. It'll be a nice respite for everybody who is traveling from the south uh, because you'll be especially in Tallahassee, roasting. August, it gets a little different. It uh, gets annoying. Mm -hmm. It's like February for the north here. People are done in February. All right. Yeah, over there. You get to August in Florida, you're like, okay, all right. So the Ireland respite's going to be a good one, and you're right. I think it could be a good game. I saw a question in the Heisen League chat before the show started of what's the early over under for next year, combined participants for Florida State. And you know what? I was doing the list. It's high. It's double digits again. I did the list this morning. Uh, so first of all, that actually works out well. Since so many Florida State players participated over the weekend and at the end of last week at the Combine, and we documented some of it the last two days we were on the air, there was more over the weekend. It, by and large, it was a very, very, very good showing for Florida State football players. And a lot of guys had an opportunity to really improve their stock. And I'm so glad most of them seem to take advantage of that opportunity. It also does. I know Ira wrote this in his column and I'll talk to Ira in the second hour of today's show. You know, we talked a little bit about, and I'm always careful about this because it's, it's in a dangerous territory. When you start talking about people's medical conditions and people's health and surgery that's necessary or not necessary things that they're, they're looking after. You have to be careful partly because it's obviously a very, 
private thing, but also as it pertains to what we're allowed to report and what Mike Norvell's rules are for allowing us to have really unfettered access uh, to Florida State football. One of the things you can't do is obviously you can't give away you know, play formations and things that they're working on. You can't do that on a day-to-day basis. But you also can't talk about players' injuries because, first of all, they want to be the first to talk to the parents of these players or the loved ones of these players if there, if there is an injury of some kind. And secondly, um, you know, they, they don't want uh, you know, speculation on something like that, which, which makes total sense. You know, I mean, we're not doctors. I don't know. Somebody could limp off from practice and be back the next day. We don't know. So we steer clear of it. And that gets me to my next point. Late in the season last year, and I've talked about this a lot, a lot in the past, and I don't want to go back over all of this, but late in the year, guys were hanging on by a thread. A lot of the players that were of vital importance to Florida State's success were guys that were going out there at 60%, in some cases 50%, 70%, guys that were really, really hurting. Uh, in terms of they needed a minor surgery to clean something up. In some cases, they needed a, a fairly significant procedure, maybe one that wouldn't take forever to rehab, but, you know, invasive. There were guys that had to deal with a lot of stuff that they could put off from week to week because they were trying to do what they did, which was go undefeated and win the conference championship and what they thought would be an automatic berth into the Invitational. Of course, it didn't happen that way because this time around, the committee took the unprecedented step of ignoring the resume and choosing a team who had a blight on said resume and putting them over one who did not. Uh, first time they've done that, Florida State on the wrong end of a screw job. We got it. Once the screwing happened and your goals were ripped from underneath you like a rug pulled and you were no longer going to get the opportunity that you had earned, Then you needed to get right and try to do and put your best foot forward, all the things that you could do in order to really have a great combine. There were a lot of guys, a lot of guys that needed to get healthy, needed to rest, needed to have minor procedures and get right for this moment in time. And I'm glad they did because almost all of them shined bright over these four days. It was something for Florida State. And here's the good news. If we're looking at good, okay, big picture. First of all, you're just happy for those guys, okay? Those are guys that played hard, played hurt, played well. They all did everything they could to represent Florida State football as best they could. So you just are happy for them. Go get paid, boys. Go make a living at it. Go do what you've trained to do since you were little kids. Uh, Number two, God, does it really enhance Florida State's profile? This is continuing a trend, guys. Florida State, when I talk about upward mobility and on an upwards path, man, Florida State right now is shining bright. Okay, you can't name too many more schools right now that are shining brighter than Florida State in the world of college football. Sure, Georgia's one of them. Got it. They're the creme de la creme right now of college football. But even a team like Michigan, who's your reigning invitational champion, They're not shining as bright. Their head coach just bolted. Half that team is gone. Nobody's projecting Michigan next year to get back to a national championship level uh, of play. We we just assume it's not going to happen, right? You'd be more apt, I think, to to look at a Florida State than you would. I would. I know Vegas might not be, but I think I would look at a Florida State over a Michigan. I would. Washington's surely not going to. They just lost their head coach, too, and their best player. So Penix is gone. Head coach is gone. Forget about it. There are maybe three teams that are shining as bright as Florida State right now. Maybe four. Maybe four. But it's it's not much. It's Texas. It's Georgia. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's not Alabama. Maybe. Maybe Alabama. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I, I think you're correct. Texas is getting trendy in that way. Oh, um, big time. Big time. I've said this a bunch too. It's nice to see our guys that we watch at practice go to the combine and put up those numbers so that we in retrospect can say, all right, that did look different to me. And I'm glad that it plays as not good for Florida state, not good for the ACC, just good, just good for the NFL. Like when Trey Benson, the first day that he was at full speed, full go, had not done a thing in a game yet. He's just from Oregon 
runs right by us on the sidelines, and you feel the the speed with which he's moving. Whoosh. You can hear him. You can hear him. The air moving out of the way. Him, him charging down for the end zone. It's on the far side, closer to Pensacola Street. I thought, oh my God. Well, that's fast. But I don't know how fast. Maybe it's four five five. But Florida State's been so bad for so long that it just looks fast. No, man, that's sub four four speed. That's yeah, what Trey Benson is now. Yeah, he ran four three nine at the combine. Wow. He's a big, big guy. Uh, all these guys had moments. I mean, Johnny Wilson, what a moment for him uh, to run four sub four six to outrun Keon Coleman, who I worried about coming into this process. Uh, I, I thought in the second half of last year, he flat out looked slow. And now th- that that's not the measure of a great wide receiver solely. I mean, Johnny does a lot of things very, very well. And he is a very good athlete, obviously. He makes the contested catch. He's got good hands. But he is not a burner. There's no question about that. And when you're running four, six, anything as a wide receiver, it's you better be really good in everything else. Really, really good. Keon may go on to have a great career. We'll see. I don't think he did himself any favors in that run. Johnny Wilson, however, did himself a lot of favors at that size to run at that speed. That was cool. I thought Johnny would run a faster time than one would expect. I didn't know he'd run a faster time than Mike Evans. Mike Evans ran a 4.53, and yeah. Johnny was a 4.52. Now, I'm not going to compare him like everybody's going to do over the next couple of months because the profiles are so similar. A vertical jump, 40 time, height, wingspan. Johnny has the largest wingspan of, of any receiver in however long. Like th- This is all good stuff for Johnny. It just comes down to the question of drops, and the drops have cost him a lot of money. If there wasn't a drop issue, this combine would have shot him up the board into the first round, I do believe. But it's going to be a fun career to monitor because, again, in one-on-one drills that we get to see, Johnny got by dudes a lot. He got by them. And I didn't know if that was because we're slow, because we're still on the way up. No. If Johnny Wilson's running by you, you might not be slow yourself because he can run 4-5-2. Jared had a great time. Jerry on Jones had an exceptional time. Oh, We're a really fat. I think what you're what you're getting at about shining bright, our reputation is going to be that we're a really fast team. Like Florida State has speed for days, and that's that's going to be pretty cool. The athleticism of Florida State, I think it, it it really, in some ways, you polished off the reputation of what Florida State was at the end of the year and reminded people, no, 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 look closer. Look closer. Uh, Florida State had a lot of really good athletes. It wasn't a few here or there. It wasn't just Jordan Travis. It wasn't just this one player or that other player there. It wasn't a stud on defense and a stud on offense and a bunch of good players. No, no. Littered throughout the 22 offense, defense starters was a bunch of really, really good athletes. And that's how you go 13 and 0. And that's also how you withstand the abnormal amount of injuries that Florida State had. It's because you have exceptionalism elsewhere on your roster. And when one part of your team goes down in in a heap, uh, an injury heap, if you will, another part rises up. And Florida State had that balance. Uh, I'm very, very impressed, and and, and I congratulate the guys. Uh, But again, I think it's an indicator of where this is headed. And I'm looking big picture. None of us know how any of these careers are going to pan out. We all have an opinion about who's going to have a great NFL career or not. We do this every year as we approach the draft. Everybody is is usually pretty um, uh, succinct with their thoughts on a player's success or failures to, to come. That's what's fun about being a fan of the league and watching college football and pro football. We all kind of do that. But but big picture, Florida State put themselves – uh, I think in another category. And and I think you, what you can't lose sight of here, if you go, so I'll, I'll read a lot of uh, basically summary articles of, of topics that I think would be interesting for my audience. Now, obviously, the central theme of this show has been for 25 plus years, Florida State Athletics. Now, we get into all the other stuff. I talk, hey, there was a stretch of time where I was on the air for a long time. I talked NBA. I would talk more NBA, but we only have two hours together. So I get it. Um. The bottom line is when I when I think about where Florida State's headed and what what I think Florida State's going to be, it's like when you have these athletes that are now being written about nationally, Tom. So when you're reading these collection, these summary articles, and every time you read a non-biased, right, just a national writer's opinion, 
and it's involving four or five of any school's players, that is a walking advertisement for the seniors in high school. That is a huge, like, hey, look over here, guys. Do you know one of the schools that's producing in mass NFL talent shine the light bright here? Florida State just became one of those. If you have a year, let's say this one is double digits, you get 10 to 12 players drafted, and then the following season you do it again. You're not a fluke, and Florida State figures to have something close to double digits again next year. Now, all of a sudden, the picture that's painted is 20-plus dudes go into the league in a two-year span from one school that is upwardly mobile and has pieced together a bunch of wins. You know, a 13-0 and season on the heels of a 10-win season, which figures, again, to be a 10-plus win season next year. Now you have the sustainability that kids want when they're choosing the places that, that they, they want to go to be developed go to the – you know, the National Football League. Yeah, that's when you can turn kids away at the high school level. Instead of, you know, going down to the nitty gritty in the 11th hour, your reputation precedes you. And it's a fun place to be. Is it? Is it hard here? Mike Norvell is honest about that. But it's a fun offense. This isn't three yards in a cloud of dust. It's multiple. They, they move the ball around. They spread the ball around. They like to rotate a lot of players. They like to play a lot of players. Like, what's remarkable to me is we're on the precipice of doing this. And, you know, short of a bunch of injuries next year, you are going to have double-digit players at the Combine yes. next year. Mm-hmm. Mike Norvell was able to do this without taking risks on culture, meaning, like, this kid could really help establish us and get us where we need to go. Cross your fingers because he might get in trouble, and this might it might torpedo the locker room. Oh, man, he built this thing by vetting players very, very closely, both in the portal and in the high school ranks. So the culture is intact as you're arriving. This is built to last. This is what he said he was going to do. This is being built to last for the long term, not parlay at all in a nice little three-year run, and then everything goes kaput like an Urban Meyer program at Florida. This is what I love about what's being built right now. A couple of things to touch on. There's a lot to get to today, actually. I want to get to all of it. Uh, But what is this Florida State baseball team besides undefeated? 10-0 10-0 and 0 now. We'll talk about them and delve into some of those numbers. They had a great weekend in Greenville, sweeping the teams from the Midwest and coming out the other side and continuing the performances that have us pretty excited about the potential for a much, much better campaign. Florida State basketball predictably went on the road and lost to Georgia Tech. Season's as good as over until we get to the ACC tournament, and then you just have to hope for a miracle run, which is highly unlikely. Um, another record broken for Caitlin Clark in college women's basketball. The Florida State basketball team won barely. Did you see that? That was uh, a little Chris Weber esque, huh? Uh, from the uh, Clemson girls calling timeout that they didn't have at the end of the game. Oops, technical foul. Tough way to lose. Sucks for you. Uh, the Knowles will be a five seed. Uh, the women will be in the ACC tournament. And then from there, of course, uh, voice of. Uh, Really, NFL reporting. Chris Mortensen passed away over the weekend, unfortunately. Touch on his legacy as well. It's the Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chat TV. Attention, Florida. Are you a victim of an auto accident? We introduce our live chat sponsor, Heisen Leica Law Firm, dedicated to representing injured clients statewide. If you've been in an accident, call Heisen Leica Law Firm at 813-803-0733 for a free consultation. Remember, there's no cost to you unless they win. Your interests come first with Heisen League, a law firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 now or visit HeisenLeagueLawFirm.com. Heisen League, a law firm, your advocate in times of need. Store, Mac and more. We all know what Mac is all about. It's your MacBooks, iMacs, Apple Watch, iPhones, iPads. We've all got them. But what's really cool is the and more. And there's a lot more at Mac and more. They can help set up your new gear, migrate and back up your data, teach you new tricks and how to use everything better. And if something costs too much to fix, they'll tell you the truth. There's a lot more at Mac and more. See for yourself at MacandMoreSystems.com. Or you can take it from me, Mr. Mac and more. There's nothing like relaxing in a hot tub after a long day. But if you don't have one, you're truly missing out. Hot tubs and spas have tremendous health benefits besides just helping you relax. Like improving your sleep, they help with pain relief. They help to better your cardiovascular health and so much more. 
and this season is the perfect season to finally buy what you've been wishing for. Pinch a penny pool, patio, and spas has the hot tubs you need for the price you want. Come shop our huge 12,000 square foot showroom and save today. There's over 50 hot tubs in stock right now, so you won't have to wait weeks on end for that delivery to finally come to town. If you're ready to relax, we're here to show you how. Pinch a penny pool, patios, and spas. Come visit our used showroom at 2473 Greer Road with over 50 hot tubs to choose from. You'll be glad you did. This is Patty Wilson. Oh, I'm sorry. We're ready. <laughs> He's recording. I, why are you always saying your last name? I it's Patty and Scott. Everybody I knows don't know that. Patty and Scott. I don't know. This is Patty Wilson. You know what this is? I am Patty Wilson. <laughs> What is the idea behind said promo? It's for Patty's Playhouse. We're on Patty's Playhouse Saturdays at 11. Tune in. That's stupid. Just tune in. Saturdays at 11. Patty Wilson, Patty's Playhouse. House talk with a happy ending. Each and every time. <laughs> Social Kitchen is now open on Cary Forest Parkway near Ology Northside, Tallahassee's only premier market where you can receive the famed Snake River Farm steaks and premier meats. Social Kitchen also has chef-prepared meals and sides ready to serve in just under 20 minutes. Perfect for those very busy springtime weeks, weekends, you name it. Hosting some people at the house. Hey, Social Kitchen also has build your own charcuterie boards and catering. Stop in and visit Social Kitchen today or visit us online at socialkitchentlh.com. Social Kitchen, TLH.com. Ready for a breath of fresh air this tax season? Well, breathe easy with ENB Heating and Air. Don't miss out on federal tax incentives for new AC systems and heat pumps. Take advantage of up to $2,000 in tax credits, plus additional savings from city and manufacturer rebates. ENB Heating and Air Conditioning has been serving Tallahassee and surrounding areas since 1974. Call us today for your free estimate at 850-575-9119 or visit us online at enbheatandair.com. That's enbheatandair.com. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience a more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown. the combine i'm very interested to see what patrick payton becomes this year by the way i i, I have a feeling yet another step going to be taken for that young man who's so long and he's put on size now he's really probably got a chance to develop into a complete defensive end he's been more of a one-dimensional defensive end in his time here but i think next year is the step he takes to being a complete defensive end in much the same way jared verse did this year jared verse got bigger, got stronger, was pretty much thought of as kind of a pass rusher initially. And then obviously by the time he left here, he was the complete package at defensive end. Um, he could set the edge. He could handle um, really people running right at him, which freed him up to do other things later on. It, it, it's um, it's good stuff. I'm really, really, really excited uh, for, for old batted balls, Peyton. And I'm excited for um, – what I think Josh Farmer will become. Let's hope Daryl Jackson takes that step as well. Good chance he does if he's practicing every day, knowing that he's going to get a chance to actually play on Saturdays. <laughs> and uh, there's help there, man. You've got, you know, you got guys now. You feel like in this rotation where everybody has a chance to shine. That's really kind of what happened at the end of last year for Florida State's defensive line. Everybody had opportunities to shine because there was so much talent and prowess around them. Uh, but but I'll get back to that. I wanted to. I mentioned before the break 
about the baseball team. Let's dive into what happened over the weekend for this baseball team, which is more victories. Uh, they are a 10-0 uh, and 0 team. Now, when you're trying to bounce back from the season that was a year ago, uh, which was a cataclysmic failure and really uh, a hard watch, it wasn't just that they were bad and that they were losing games. It's that you couldn't see a way for them to win games. You know, sometimes when you watch a team that's, uh, you know, coming up short in certain areas, Tom, you're like, well, they just don't have anybody to close it out. Well, the back end of the bullpen's bad and they blow a lot of leads. But for Florida State, they didn't have starting pitching beyond really, a, you know, they had about a pitcher and a half that were decent. Nobody dominated uh, at the front of that rotation. You, so you went into every three game series over the weekend thinking, well, going to have to win a slugfest somewhere along the way here. And you have to hope like hell your one good starter has a good outing. You know, you didn't have much in the way of hope. You couldn't pick up the baseball. You didn't run the base as well. You had guys that were having to play out of position solely because they could hit a little bit. So you had guys that weren't playing where they're supposed to play. You had a whole lot of swing and miss in you. You couldn't pick up the baseball. You weren't a deep lineup. So if your few hitters at the top didn't get hits, you were screwed. Basically, there were a lot of ways to just pitch around Tibbs. So you had all these issues. Uh, you had a, you had a lot of issues. I'll just leave it at that. I don't want. We we documented last year, but when we started this year, the hope was that you would a pick up the baseball better. Guys would be more uh, aligned with where they're supposed to be. And the influx of players would be guys that had played those positions. You had gotten a good look at them at their previous location, and you thought obviously coming into this lineup they would improve defensively. Well, they have. They've improved defensively through 10 games significantly. I'll get to those numbers in a minute. Offensively, they lengthened the lineup. Now, you knew that was what they were trying to do, and you saw some of the numbers of the kids that were coming in this year, and you thought, okay, all right, well, you know, maybe now we've got, what, five or six guys that you feel pretty good about. Well, it's so far, it's th this is a lengthy lineup. We are a team that applies pressure pretty much one through nine right now. It's a problem for opposing pitchers. If you don't believe now, again, early season competition does not always portend of what's to come when you get into conference play. But Florida State entering into the rankings now, I don't really care about regular season rankings, but as further proof that they're getting noticed, they're, FSU baseball is ranked 19th by perfect game. They're 24th by Baseball America. They play Florida Gulf Coast this upcoming Wednesday. That could be a really good game at 4 o'clock. Florida State has scored at least seven runs in every game they've played this year. The team, as uh, you know, I, one of the most, most impressive aspects of this as a team is the on base percentage. The team on base percentage is 469. Uh, they're slugging close to 600. Batting average, 367 for the team. Um, most of this lineup right now is hitting over 300. Cam Smith is hitting 478. He has 22 hits already this year. Tibbs, obviously, six home runs. We've seen the production there. He's always had power. He's also had a sweet, beautiful swing since the day he stepped foot on campus. He's got 21 RBIs. He's slugging 860. You brought Ferro in. I remember watching Adam Ferro, his dad. I watched him play when he was here. Now I'm old and watching his son play. Well, his son has scored 15 times this year. He's had nine extra base hits. He has seven doubles on the year. The pitching staff, Tom has a team ERA of 330. Teams are hitting 220 against FSU pitching. And here's a number that will blow you away. They have struck out 140 batters in 90 innings, and they've only walked 54. Last year, when I talked about the maddening inability to pick up the baseball, through 10 games, Florida State has just eight errors. This is a much better team through 10 games this year. It's not even close, and they steal bases to boot. So you've got an aggressiveness on the base paths. You have an athleticism defensively that wasn't there a year ago. This is a bat-to-ball lineup. Last year they were unwatchable with all the strikeouts. So, hey, bravo. You knew Link wasn't going to sit idly by. I don't know what they are just yet by way of comparison to teams that we will think are favored to go to the College World Series, but I know they're a lot better than they were a year ago, and it's not close. Yeah, just you know, being able to watch all the games that I do and then physically seeing one last Tuesday, to me, it's too early 
to go crazy for them. Next week is is where, when you start to get it on. You got Florida on Tuesday and then a weekend series with Notre Dame. Okay, now we're starting to get some more defined just how good is Florida State. This is, to me, at least a consistently competitive group. Like this, They're going to play competitive baseball consistently with the likes of this conference, which is pretty dang good this year. The ACC is pretty good. So, And, of course, Wake Forest leads the way there. That's what I'm excited to see, though, is beyond consistently competitive, not shooting themselves in the foot, how high can they reach? Like, are we watching something special, kind of an overnight thing? Or what are we watching? Is it a team that maybe could be a top 16 national seed? Is it a team that you would favor to come out of a regional? And then we'll see what happens in the Supers. The terms will be defined beginning next week. Uh, the, the Gulf Coast game could be good, and there was a washout tomorrow, for those of you who don't know. Bad weather in the area tomorrow, so they're only playing one instead of two midweek with Gulf Coast. So that could be a good game Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Then you got New Orleans coming into town, and then it's go time. This is going to be a fun couple of weeks to learn about this group. Yeah, I, I think that um, some, of the, some of the things that we've seen through 10 games will continue to translate. Um, you know, if you're picking up the baseball through 10 games, that's a large enough sample size to suggest they're a lot better at doing that than they were a year ago. Because whether you're playing a good team or a bad team, a ground ball is a ground ball. If you can pick it up and throw it accurately to the base, then you're doing that better through 10 games than you did anything close to a year ago. We know that. The athleticism that plays on the base paths in the outfield, guys that can really go, that plays. That doesn't, that's not going to change. Uh, some of those things are there. You have more arms. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you've got a lot more arms than you had a year ago. We, we, you know, this is Jamie Arnold hasn't given up an earned run in he's, 17 innings. He's been something, man. And, and again, no walks again in his start this weekend. He was the one that started the three game set because uh, there was a washout Friday. Like these coaches have to be like, come on, can we get into a routine here a little bit? I know they've got two games to play with that They could schedule later in the year if they want to. I'm, I'm hoping that they do because there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of depth here. You want to see more of the players, but uh, because of the washout situation, in the two games on Saturday, Jamie Arnold set the tone, man. Yeah. And it was no walks. His whip is well under one so far this season. There's no trouble on the base paths. He has been something else. Now we'll see what he does with the step up in competition next week. I just want for them to be good so bad. It's so much fun around here. I mean, I, I, that's the thing. You know, for the most part in the years that I've been doing this show, Florida State baseball was a part of that. I always, I was very fortunate because I recognize that there aren't too many areas of the country where college baseball plays. You, um, you you couldn't go on the air in too many places, too many regions of the country, and even bring up college baseball with a straight face. But you can in Tallahassee because of the great tradition. And you can when it's Florida State baseball, and people care about it, and they're passionate about it. And so to have it having been basically persona non grata a year ago, where there's just you were excited about Link's opportunity, and then you saw what they were, and then you recognize there's no magic dust to sprinkle on this team to change their fortune this year. They just don't have these things, and they're going to have to wait and do a massive overhaul. And they'll hold on to the key pieces and then really just try to infuse some life, some more talent into this uh, roster. And they did. They did. And, you know, trying to flip culture too. So there's a lot of that going on. Good for Florida State baseball. Off to a great start. By the way, if you've been in an accident, call Isolinka Law Firm at 813-803-0733 for a free consultation. There's no cost to you unless they win. Your interests come first with Isolinka Law Firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 now or visit IsolinkaLawFirm.com. That's Isolinka Law Firm, your advocate in times of need. Offices, Tampa. Local news now. Tallahassee police shut down a portion of Jackson Bluff Road in Tallahassee after a vehicle struck a pedestrian there Friday night. A sedan struck a pedestrian on the busy roadway just before 8 p.m. The crash happened just off West Game Street, only blocks from Dope Campbell Stadium and Florida State University. Police closed the street from Prince Street to Hayden Road while they cleared the scene. The pedestrian was transported to a local hospital with serious injuries. No further information is available at this time. Governor Ron DeSantis has vetoed a social media ban for Florida children. State lawmakers sent him the bill 
ill, which would ban children younger than 16 in the Sunshine State from all social media platforms. After eight days of speculation on whether Governor would sign off on the controversial new policy, DeSantis notably announced via social media Friday that he shot the bill down. But he clarified that he isn't opposed to the idea in its entirety. Many critics of the bill have raised concerns that the ban would limit parental rights. This is Rachel Anae with your Earl Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Mecklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at mecklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Partly cloudy this afternoon with a slight chance for storms. Highs level off around 79. Southeast winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Slight chance of thunderstorms tonight. Lows level off around 61. Overcast skies. Overcast skies tomorrow. Storms are likely. High temperatures reach up to 72. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 69. Your heating and air conditioning system doesn't check with you before it takes a break. That's why we're always ready to help any day, anytime, anywhere. And with our annual service agreement, there are no overtime charges ever. At Verno Heating and Air, we will always be there for you. Verno Heating and Air Conditioning. So everybody knows, Eddie, that you are a spectacular cook. Of course they know that. If they go into Bumpa's, the food is always good. I mean, mm-hmm. everything on the menu. Mm-hmm. Everything at Gordo's is delicious. I always, of course, get the what, the bungalow chungla, as I call it. The bungalow chung, Jeff. Is that a, what, what is the pork? The bungalow chung, oh, Jeff. Okay, the bungalow chungla. It's delicious. All these things, all the items, yes. everything you do, a, a master cook. But, sir, I would ask you, what is a skill that you possess that you're particularly proud of, that nobody would know, and that uh, that you could share with us here. Growing hair, Jeff. Growing hair. You're an asshole. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside the Florida State Athletic. Now, back to Jeff on... Uh, Doffing the cap to the baseball team that won. I was very pleased uh, of their performance. Not pleased to see FSU do what's predictable on the road against Georgia Tech. We never play well there. Came out, able to score. Defense was optional for both teams. Second half, Florida State doesn't get enough stops. Doesn't shoot the ball well at all. That second half is as ugly a testament to poor shooting as you'll see. And uh, they lose. So. That's uh, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. A whole lot of nothing for basketball. And that stinks. I just talked about the infusion of life for baseball. Would like to see it for basketball. Uh love Leonard, but uh, this is this is not it. This is this is tough to this is tough to stomach. This is our concern, dude. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. I uh, I missed that game. I was oh. I, I was seeing friends, you know, uh, the mm-hmm. crew. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I get down there now, it's like, man, there's a laundry list. You, you, you live there 18 years. You got people you need to see to check in on, make sure that they understand that you care about them. So that's what was going on on Saturday. I uh, didn't see too much of the hoops game. Next thing you know, it's it's time to go to the wedding. So, um, yeah, I just uh, by looking I'm at glad the- you missed it, Tom. I'm glad you missed it, buddy. I found time for baseball, though, <laughs> and we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks with, with the hoops team. But it's just, you know, it's unfortunate. They, were, they had their moments this year, and this is a group. That is not like the, its two predecessors. They care. Sure. No. They have heart. They're just not good enough. They're just no. not good enough. Well, they can't shoot. Uh, sad note over the weekend. Now, I, th- I'm getting old. This happens too often. A lot of people who were majorly influential in this business 
maybe not on me, but just in the business in general, in some cases on me, uh, are, are, are dying off. It's true of like musicians and writers and people that were influential in your youth. Now it's true for this business. Um, Chris Mortensen kind of invented a genre. And I think it's worth mentioning, uh, you know, I, Tom, you grew up basically in the, in the heart of the Mort Report era. I mean, that he, you know, you forget until you go back and look at the career. Uh, he, he, he became, I thought Richard Deutsch, uh, Deutsch did a good job of writing about this. Lots of people have written about this. He was incredibly influential within that industry. Uh, one thing that stands out whenever anybody dies like this and people come out to talk about their experiences with the man, um, you, you do it. You take notice when they are universally beloved. And that was something that upon the announcement that Chris Mortensen had passed away at the age of 72, uh, that really stood out to me. Every single person who took to social media or wrote about it for a site began their article in the documentation of who Chris Mortensen was and how he first got hired at ESPN and what he developed, uh, which was created a, a cottage industry where everybody knows now the sports television insider. Everybody's got one. That's all because of Chris Mortensen. Um, but, you know, he joined ESPN in 1991, Tom. 1991 that guy had been doing it for that long it's amazing yeah so for me growing up um everybody who's like me in their mid to late 30s it was two guys two guys on espn that led the way in terms of the reporting and chris mortensen was the football guy peter gammons was the baseball guy yeah yeah and it's just whatever they said was gospel now you're right it spun off into something else and he got to work with adam Schefter for a long period of time but, you know, NFL Network wanted to copy what Chris Mortensen was doing for ESPN, and that's how they got Schefter. And it's a cottage industry. The insider stuff is a cottage industry. I mean, it's huge. Uh, Woj bombs, you know, in well, basketball. All, yeah. Like, yeah, now it is ubiquitous. It's everywhere, yeah. The thing that, that really uh, – I don't know if you saw it yesterday, but when Rich Eisen and Daniel Jeremiah are talking about Mort, mm -hmm. Jeremiah is broken. He is – and that's, that's a relatively young dude in the profession. Yeah, which tells you that, you know, Chris Mortensen has peers from the early 90s and the late 80s that love him when he got it, when he was just getting into television. And then he's got Daniel Jeremiah, who's kind of like my age. And Daniel is weeping on the air. Yeah, that, I that tell you, that's, that's, it, it speaks volumes and it broke my heart. Oh, when you hear it. Yeah, when you hear it, it absolutely does. Uh, there, there were a lot of genuine, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not getting choked up. I just can't breathe. <laughs> coffee went down the wrong way that's all those uh, bomb drives you hit yesterday that took it out of your lungs <laughs> I was hitting some drives yesterday that's true uh no no but uh it was poignant to hear how many people in that business who work under that umbrella basically they are the newest insider or certainly somebody who kind of came around because of what the trail that was paved by chris mortensen all of them came out and they were all broken Tom they were all like oh man like to hear them that's what they began with even better person incredible person I saw at least 25 pictures of people who work either for the NFL network or ESPN or were the contemporaries at other networks of their like alongside Chris Mortensen they're all smiling ear to ear when the, they get the picture with Mort tells you a lot about the way he treated people so off of the cap and we all knew you know my man had been battling cancer vocal cord cancer since i think 2016 and you know you talk about fighting the good fight you read the articles today i won't do that for you but go go read all those articles i mean my man he battled hard uh he nearly died several times during that stretch and always came back to work always came back still doing his job yeah it's worth noting 72 a shame i hate that he had just basically retired last year and said okay i'm gonna take some time away now i'm good didn't get a lot of time it's unfortunate it is it, it was um it was a golden era for cable sports you know that's what that's what espn was is you had these cornerstone figures but it also was appointment like you know this is something that i don't even know that director matthew can relate to like of course sports center is still a thing 
and now they they 11 o'clock sports center with svp is like a central show that they do but you were legitimately getting the news from mortensen you know it yeah. wasn't like who's first like now it's about who was first you know andy martino first to report ken rosenthal first to report it's like you see you know if you follow four insiders you're getting the same story four times you're like all right the hell i get it a trade happened what else is happening like you would get the news from these dudes at six o'clock and he was he was always, always, always out front at doing that stuff. It was, um, yeah. He was also really funny. He was on Lebitard for a long time as a recurring guest, and you got to see the personality a little bit. He just, but, like, you can see why people are, are really broken up about it. Peter King was good. He just retired last week, and he mentioned that um, that he believes he's, you know, he's an all-time where he belongs next to Will McDonough, he said, on the Mount Rushmore of NFL information people. Uh, they are the two guys. He did it for so long and did it incredibly well that it was the sort of thing that for years, no matter where I was, I would make sure that I watch every one of his segments on ESPN's pregame show. I'm a little emotional about it right now because after I retired the other day, he called me. He sounded great. Called me, said a bunch of really nice things to me. I just always appreciated my relationship with him, and I appreciated his vigor, his work ethic, and his professionalism. That's um, yeah, That's a hell of a compliment. Uh, I mean, was, those are the two big names in the NFL reporting. Both got, ones passed on and ones retired, and just like that, it's it's summarized. By the way, NFL news, no easy way to segue there, but uh, rest in peace, Mortensen, obviously. But I want to go back to this really quick. Looks like he's going to get to finish it out in Tampa, Tom. I can't say his nickname on the air. <laughs> no, you can't. No, you can't. But I do know he's a Hall of Famer. And I know that it's important for franchises to be able to have signature players that people can reflect upon when they think of that organization, when they think of that franchise. You know, the the all-time great franchises like the Green Bay Packers and the San Francisco 49ers and the Dallas Cowboys and the Oakland Raiders and the Pittsburgh Steelers, these franchises have player upon player upon player that you can reflect upon and say, oh, well, this guy was the best in the 70s at linebacker. This guy was the best running back in the league. This guy was the best receiver. Quarterback's obviously the one that stands out the most. And a lot of your franchises that have not have had as much success over the years can rather infrequently refer to a guy and say that he was or this was a part of a, a legacy of players at this position, right? Well, there's no getting around it. I, I think that for Tampa Bay, to be able to sign Mike Evans uh, to a two-year, $52 million deal, which in essence means he's going to get to finish it out in Tampa, is a big deal. It's a big deal because that's going to be an instant Hall of Fame career. It is. Um, he's 3,000 yards away, essentially, from being a top-10 NFL receiver all time. And he's relatively young. Again, 10 years of a career so far, 1,000 yards every single season. You get an extra game now to run up some of those numbers, 17-game season versus 16-game season. Uh, I was super happy. You know that. Uh, I was super happy to see that Mike is is sticking around with Tampa. I got that news on the airplane, on the TV screen. Oh, hey, today's a good day. I'll bet you, as long as his body can handle it, and he's remarkably tough, always available, gets on the field even if he's banged up. If his body can do it, he'll do it for more than two years. It's just This is the last big contract he'll get. I think from here on, it's going to go down in terms of average annual value. I hope that for him, um, he well, I just hope he gets to finish it out in Tampa. You know he's got at least these two years. Uh, I was so excited when Derek Brooks never left the Bucks. Remember at the end, it was so close. He was going to go to Minnesota. He was going to go to New Orleans. New Orleans, yeah. We brought in uh, Cato June was his replacement. Cato June is who they signed instead of uh, keeping Derek Brooks around another year. Well, or two. I just remember being nervous about it and thinking, man, I don't want to see, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, it, I go back to when I remember watching Tony Dorsett play for the Broncos. And obviously in a more modern era, people saw Emmitt Smith play for the Arizona Cardinals and you can do this with players, right? Yeah. I see Optimus. Yeah, you can, you can much to my chagrin. And many a text to Tom Lang, who is uh, I these days when he drops a pass that's critical on third and seven right in his hands, it's going to be a drive sustainer. Nobody around him within 10 yards, perfectly thrown ball. When that happens, I just sometimes text Tom dot, dot, dot. 
Yeah, uh, it's, it's true. <laughs> it, it really is. Uh, when Mike's career is over and, you know, he's going to be with Tampa. So you wouldn't have done this, I don't think, unless there was a playoff game and he was on another team. Right. When his career is over, I'm going to miss those texts because, <laughs> you know, Jamie would be watching the games with me. We've got the, you know, one o'clock window on. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I point at my phone when he drops it. I just point. Like an obvious drop because there's always yeah. one. Right. Yeah. So, but I point at the phone. And she, she's like, what? I think, mm, 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 mm. Mm. There it is. Yep. There it is. Some of them are a little bit more uh, intricate. Sometimes I, I call him by the nickname that I've developed for him over the years. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's nothing tragic, guys. It just has to do with his fingers being something other than fingers. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can check, check Jeff's mentions. Uh, he didn't build this image, but you can check his mentions. Just don't do it around the kids. <laughs> but yeah, it'll happen. And then he'll drop that one. And it's usually it's a critical one. Kind of needed that one, buddy. I was going to keep the drive going. We kind of needed you there. He does it. But what's crazy about it, just as much as it's guaranteed that Mike Evans is going to drop a critical pass at a critical moment in a critical stage of a game that you really want to win. It is also true. He's going to make an unbelievable catch that very few in the league can make. You know, you're gonna, there's going to be a moment where you're like, now, how in the world do you catch that one? Now, people want the comp to be Johnny Wilson to Mike Evans. We'll see. We'll see. That is a hell of a thing to aspire to. I get it. Both are really, really tall. Both are very fast for their size. Both can be matchup nightmares because of said size. We'll see. Johnny's got to be really good for a really long time, as in a thousand yards every year he's in the league, like Mike Evans has. Uh, good. That's he'll tough to do. He'll have to do something that nobody else has done besides Mike Evans. That's true. Hour number two, forthcoming. Stay with. Excellence defines us, so we'll never let orthopedic pain and injury define you. TOC is a physician-led team of fellowship-trained specialists, providing the highest level of orthopedic care in the region. With 12 centers of excellence and TOC Now Urgent Care Clinics, our patients access affordable expert care fast. TOC, only experts. Schedule an appointment at teamtoc.com. Hey, no fans, our partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. If you think you can't afford a new hot tub, think again. The prices of Pinch a Penny will have you pinching yourself in the arm just to make sure you're not dreaming. Ow! Visit Pinch a Penny on Greer Street off Capitol Circle Northeast today. Leaky faucet, busted pipes, clogged toilet, MNL Plumbing is here for you. For all commercial, construction, and residential plumbing issues, call MNL Plumbing at 575-9393 or visit online at mnlplumbing.com. I'm Caleb. I'm the lawn supervisor at Paul's Termite and Pest Control, and I really do love my job. Paul's has created an incredible work environment that always puts our customers' needs first. Their needs are our concerns, and my particular job of improving the health of North Florida lawns is something I truly enjoy. I'm an outdoor person, and I get to be outside all day watching the lawns run through the stages full of weeds to weedless to lush, grass-filled landscapes is very rewarding. I'm proud to represent Paul's. I'm Jay. Having the privilege to work with people like Caleb and all of our employees is truly an honor. There is no doubt that the staff of Paul's Termite and Pest Control is the best in our industry. All of our people are local, and local really does mean something. We're North Floridians. Our kids go to school here. We shop here. We build relationships here. And we honor our commitments. To all of our customers, thanks for trusting us to protect your family, pets, and home. For the elimination of termites, any other pests, and a greener lawn too, call Paul's. We'll get them all. 
There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall, featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. The latest betting odds and live movements from Vegas. This is your action update. Now, here are your latest lines from our guys in the desert. The Planet Sun Tournament gets underway today. The Jacksonville Dolphins on the road at Kennesaw State. The Dolphins are the four-point underdog against the Owls. A total 147.5 at the KSU Convocation Center. Jacksonville 130-1 to to win the Atlantic Sun Tournament title. It's Florida Gulf Coast laying four at home with Queens, a total 153 in that other first-round matchup. Coming up today, Florida A&M on the road at Southern. The Jaguars are the 12-point home favorite, 136 and a half the total. Grapefruit League Baseball today, the Tampa Bay Rays, another 55 favorite in Port Charlotte against the Pirates. Get your free VSIN subscription right now at VSIN.com. For more sports betting news and information, go to VSIN.com. Mike Sun at Real Talk 93.3. Wendy's new breakfast two for $3 Biggie Bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo is the best. Sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee. Or two savory sausage biscuits. Yeah, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for $3 Biggie Bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price of participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular price. Some people just know the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Not one based on Carol. She's more focused on hitting the high note than the car in front of her. Why pay a rate based on anyone else? Get one based on you with DriveWise from Allstate. Not available in Alaska or California. Subject to terms and conditions. Rates are determined by several factors which vary by state. In some states, participation in DriveWise allows Allstate to use your driving data for purposes of rating. While in some states, your rate could increase with high-risk driving. Generally, safer drivers will save with DriveWise. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company in affiliates North Dakota, Illinois. I'm Greg Tish here to share one of my favorite TCC stories. In the summer of 1966, Eugene Lamb wanted to stay in shape before leaving to play college basketball in Louisiana. So he jogged to Tallahassee from his home in Midway and helped lay the bricks for the first building on what's now the TCC campus on Apple Yard Drive. Today, he is a longtime member of the TCC District Board of Trustees. It's no exaggeration when we say Trustee Lamb helped build TCC into what it is today. TCC thanks our community for 58 years of support. We look forward to moving into the future together. Zaxby's Zensation Salad is so much more than a plain old salad. It's a salad, which begs the question, at what point does a salad stop being a salad and become a salad? Is it when you add Zaxby's Fried Chicken to it? Crunchy wontons? Asian slaw? Citrus vinaigrette? Teriyaki glaze? Sweet and spicy sauce? Or is it when you top it all with a handmade, perfectly fried egg roll? Without a doubt, the egg roll. The Zensation Salad, only at Zaxby's. Keeping power reliable and affordable here in Florida is our most important commitment. At Duke Energy, we're working across our communities, strengthening our systems, rerouting power to help avoid outages, and adding proven innovations that will help make the grid stronger and more secure today and ready for tomorrow. Because Florida deserves more reliable and affordable power. And we're determined to deliver it. Paid for by Duke Energy shareholders. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron
Florida State wins three in baseball, basketball loses, and the combine is a huge success for Florida State football. Much of what we got into last hour, I'm still a buzz about that. We'll talk to Irish Chappelle this hour uh, about that very thing because I was thinking the whole time when I read his piece and really each time I watched a Florida State player succeed there about the, the many great things that were highlighted regarding Florida State football and where it's headed. Also, I did not mention this when I was talking about uh, you know, kind of the uptick and the momentum that we've watched in this program as of late. But, you know, Tom, we, I don't know why, maybe we just assumed and we were correct to assume that Trey Benson would have a great combine. Uh, and he did. And, uh, but you know, I, what I didn't talk about was that, uh, he had some wonderful things to say about Florida state. Many players have, in fact, lately, uh, we know, about the quotes, um, whether it's Jared Verse and some others, but this was a great quote, I thought, coming from Trey Benson. Going to Florida State is probably the best thing that's ever happened to me. Coach brought me in, didn't have to take a chance on me because I didn't have any film coming from my previous school. Obviously, Benson went on to rush for nearly 2,000 yards and 23 touchdowns in two seasons with Florida State. The story of the combine, the story of college football today, besides super conferences and how quickly we're headed that way, is the transfer portal. And you look at Florida State's roster, so many of the guys that we're talking about, almost all of the guys that we're talking about that had success at the combine are transfer portal players. And you can extrapolate that out further. Jaden Daniels having left Arizona State goes on to win a Heisman at LSU and is going to get drafted in the first 10 picks of this draft. Michael Penix, a lot of people didn't even remember him at Indiana. He had a lot of injuries. He leaves Indiana, goes to Washington. They make it all the way to the national championship game. Uh, we do remember Bo Nix having to try to live up to his father's name and then taking it out of the SEC and going off to Oregon. But he went on to have a great run at Oregon. And even lesser-known players, uh, like a Spencer Rattler who left Oklahoma and ends up going to South Carolina. So everywhere you looked during the combine, everywhere you looked almost program for program, you just see transfer portal star, transfer portal star, transfer portal star. It's reshaped all of what we think about recruiting, all of what we think about a roster build, all of what we think about really what you have year to year. There's far less certainty than ever before, but it works both ways because on the one hand, you're scared somebody's going to raid your roster because believe me, they're trying, especially if you're good. And on the other hand, you recognize that if you suck, if you got a good collective and you're committed, you don't have to suck for very long. Look how fast Florida State and Mike Norvell has turned this around. Well, and to your point, again, the messaging of development, development of players. They're not just getting transfer portal players who are ready-made and are going to be contenders for awards in the different categories for their positions. They're not getting mercenaries who decide, well, I'm already going to be a first-round pick. Let's see how much more money I can make as I go chase a title or something along those lines. Trey Benson is a story about development. That's a, It's a success story for Mike Norvell, for Josh Storms, for David Johnson. You know, Jared Verse is a development win for Florida State. Yeah, Tennessee wanted him, and yeah, some other big-name programs wanted him, but he was a project, and they turned him into a much better player than the guy he came in to Tallahassee as, and he said as much at the podium in the Combine last week. The positive messaging is off the charts for Florida State, but I do want to return to Trey Benson for just one second. So it's six feet tall and 216 pounds. He runs a 4.3940. Here are two comps in terms of size and time. Jonathan Taylor ran a 4.39, at five foot 10, 226. He's a little bit more of a bowling ball than Trey Benson, but Trey's not small. And then Brees Hall, who, when he's healthy, is fantastic at the professional level. 439, five foot 11, 217 pounds. Man, sometimes guys go to the league and it seems like it's more fit for them. Like Carlos Williams is one of my favorite examples. Carlos Williams was a, an impact player immediately at the NFL level, and consistency was, was an issue here at Florida State, but he was a uh, one make one guy miss and a house call every week for Buffalo. I, I'm really excited to see what system Trey Benson arrives into and what he can do. I would argue that Carlos Williams was one of the five, maybe one of the four best athletes to ever play at Florida State. Mm -hmm. 
people yeah. don't, we don't, you know, you, p- immediately people will say, you know, a Deion Sanders, uh, and understandably, and Charlie Ward, you know, anybody that can play two sports, one at win a Heisman and go in the first round of the NBA draft and have that career is going to be a freakish athlete. There are guys like that, but I mean, very rarely do people mention Carlos. Carlos was a freak show and so much. So you could have put him almost anywhere and they did safety linebacker running back. I mean, I don't, you know, whatever it was about the NFL and, and, you know, I don't know if he lost his passion or what it was. I know that it, he certainly kind of ate his way out of the league. Um, I, I've always thought he could have had a 10 year or, or longer career. He, he was otherworldly, preternaturally gifted, just an unbelievable athlete to be that size, to be that big, that strong and that fast. You just never see it. It's nuts. Well, his agility off the charts too. What's interesting though, if you just look at the raw numbers and the 40 isn't the best measure, football speed's a thing. And Carlos had it for days. None of it. Six foot one, two thirty. So, that is that's a lot of weight, Eight, almost twenty pounds more than Trey Benson. Just to think about that, and an inch taller. He ran a four four eight. He ran a four four eight forty, and his ten yard split was one point six. Like he was just lightning in a bottle. But Trey, he could go on to have a really big time career and be special. And maybe we'll look back on it and say, maybe we we maybe should have projected that a little bit more than talking about you know Jared Verse or Keon Coleman in this draft. Maybe we should have spent more time on Trey. Because when you consider the elusiveness from two years ago, only Bijan Robinson was in the same class in terms of breaking tackles. When you consider this offensive line was uh, a little bit worse this year, oh yeah, that, that he's never fumbled the football. I mean, the, the, he's got all the makings now to to have a long career as long as you can have as a running back in the NFL. Yeah, and I think the fear is that he had the one really bad knee injury already, and so you you worry about it. But, you know, he rebounded from that big time, and then people see the production and they see the speed and the size. You're absolutely right. You know one of the cool things about Trey Benson is, for whatever reason, just because you could kind of, I guess, just trust that he was going to be a, a really productive player for you early on once he showed that he was able to get over that injury, we he kind of got lost in the shuffle of all the transfers. We talk about other people as transfer as productive transfer portal players more than we talk about Trey Benson. It's weird that way. I don't know why. Um, you know, obviously a quarterback is going to get talked about more than a running back. And if you are a can't miss first round draft pick or first or second round draft pick at wide receiver, you tend to get a lot of attention. Uh, Jermaine Johnson, when he came in, kind of was the first to change the tenor for Florida State. Like, the, people didn't look like him on this roster when he got here. The, 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 he was such a standout player. He was the guy that I said if he walked in the locker room at Alabama, nobody would bat an eyelash. They would just think he was another player, right? He was like just another one of these badasses that eats from the Bama table. But when he walked into our roster, we were like, holy jeez. And that was an indicator that you knew we had a long way to go because the kid comes in from Georgia and he doesn't look like any other player in the room. But with Benson, you know, we had started to infiltrate, if you will, this roster with more professional looking players, more plus players, you know, Florida State caliber players. And it's just fascinating. I don't know. I just feel like he's largely overlooked. We all know he's productive. Everybody at Florida State understands how good Trey Benson was. Uh, kind of a boomer bust runner though, in a weird way. Maybe that's what it is too. He he was able to produce a lot of really memorable runs, but he wasn't a 23 carry a game kind of guy, you know, where he just wears you down over time with the size. That's not who he was. There wasn't an inevitability to Trey Benson. There were times where, you know, we needed Trey Sean Ward to be the player. We needed right, to, right. he wasn't the starter until halfway through last year. But one thing about his legacy that we should always remember and celebrate he beat the crap out of Florida and Miami both years. He was mm-hmm. fantastic against yeah, Florida and Miami. Guy. So he had two touchdowns, 80 yards this year against Miami. Florida, he gave us the parting gift of the jump cut in a game where we were one-dimensional on offense. Like it, it wasn't The numbers weren't electric early on, but by the end of the game, Trey Benson took it over, and it was amazing. But his effort against Florida at home two years ago was special. You know, He started the game with a big run. He ended the game with a big run. And then there was the counterplay over and over and over again on the road at <laughs> Miami. Two years in a row, in-state rivalries like you know, Mike Norvell gives out rings for state championships. They they print the shirts for state championships. Trey Benson owned 
Miami. Trey Benson owned Florida, and that's what he did in two years' time. I wish he came back for one more year because I'm sure they were sick of him. Fun player to root for. Really fun guy to talk to. Always seem to have a positive to, to add to the day's end. Ran hard. Loved Florida State. Spoke glowingly of his teammates and of the coaching staff every opportunity he got. He's going to be fun to monitor and see what he does. You know, I think perhaps the other reason that Trey Benson gets overlooked is if you think of the lore of Florida State backs, he's well down the list. You know, I mean, you're going to start that list with the the Warwick Dunn's and Dalvin Cooks of the world. And, you know, we were talking about Sammy Smith in here. I saw in the chat as well. I remember Sammy very well. But there's been so many great running backs come through Florida State, and many of them would overshadow Trey Benson. But Trey was very, very good. Very, very good. And now is a chance to make a lot of money. Let's hope he does in a short time, gets that second contract, right? Running backs have it kind of tough right now. That's the way it works. I'll be interested to see if that, you know, if it gets blocked up for him, he's going to put up some eye popping numbers. But if he's got to dodge dudes in the backfield, you people might accuse him of being a bust. That I, he needs to have an offensive line. But if he does, man, it, he will put up numbers every week. Because even though you're right, he's not a workhorse of a back where this offense was built to give him the ball 30 times. I never thought of him as a player that, well, he looks like he's wearing down. He, he no. was, he was very, he finished games really strongly consistently here at Florida State. Optimist, the answer is Greg Jones from a college career standpoint. Greg Jones was unreal, and he actually had a nice career in the NFL as a fullback uh, with Jacksonville. And uh, by the way, the, the Greg Jones story is also incredible because with Greg Jones, he ate anything he wanted, mostly uh, food that's not good for you, and he slathered it with mayonnaise every time. They did a special on him having done that. And um, he looked like a Greek god. It never made any sense. He was, it's like uh, a bigger version of Jim Brown without, I mean, I'm not saying he didn't work out. He just had some gifts. My man was fortunate. He just, it was unreal. So a, a quick note on Greg Jones. Um, you could, you know, probably summarize, he's around 250 pounds when he played. You know, like you could guess and say that that's generally speaking where he was. Over six feet tall, 250 pounds, four five five. How about a four five five in the forty? So in, in this day and age, they would have let him be Derrick Henry instead of maybe playing fullback. But a four five five at about two fifty is just. I absurd. think he was less than two fifty, Tom. I know he looked it. I think he was probably about two forty, two thirty five. I think at the heat. I mean, he was. Where they list him at? They in the NFL they got him up to to two seventy five, and then I found anecdotals about two fifty or so in college, but you can't. Maybe yeah, he, yeah. There's no chance he was to ever 270. I don't think Greg Jones was ever 270. I mean, I that that the the Greg Jones that ran here had to have been 240, 245. I, we'll see. It's interesting. Doesn't matter. He was a monster, and he's responsible for one of the greatest runs in college football history. And we've watched it on YouTube a hundred times, maybe two hundred times. And every time I saw it, I would laugh. And how many times did we play that? at the old place of employment. I mean, we used to run that clip over and over. Well, it's just because the one announcer just, he, oh, my. <laughs> that guy did such a good job. He did Ooh. such a good job. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> he was intimidated oh. in the booth. He was in, oh, no. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's evil. That poor kid. Went on to have a career with the New England Patriots. Jeff Cambridge Show 93.3, Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. This is Jamie McClenney with Trek Financial in Tallahassee. Despite the highest global interest rates in almost two decades, inverted yield curves, conflicts in the Middle East, and three of the largest bank failures in U.S. history, equities and bond markets have posted stellar returns for 2023. The Dow Jones, the NASDAQ 100, and the Russell 2000 all reached new highs as markets rallied on the expectations of Fed pauses, Fed easing, and Fed bank bailouts. Markets are going to do what markets are going to do, but a clearly defined risk management protocol can help to mitigate large drawdowns in your retirement. If you're concerned where all this might be headed, call me at 850-900-5200. 
and let's talk about ways to mitigate the risk in your portfolio. Make Jamie your first call for that second opinion. Investment advisory services offered through Trek Financial LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. <laughs> If you've been waiting and waiting for the perfect time to buy your new house, you'll be waiting forever. This is Shannon Young with Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, and I have been a mortgage lender for over 20 years. And I can tell you that there is no such thing as perfect time. So take the first step towards your new home and let me show you what that really looks like. Chances are very high that you'll be very surprised at what I can help you do. When rates go low, prices go high, and that home that you've been eyeballing could be gone. If you're wondering how the drop in interest rates is going to affect your payment, give me a call. I'll be more than happy to show you all of the options available to get you into your new home. And for every single loan that we close for a fellow Noel, I will personally donate $250 per closing to the battle's end. Let's do this together and let's keep climbing. Call me today at 954-369-6171. That's 954-369-6171. Or you can find me online at loansfornoles.com. That's loansfornoles.com. Equal Healthy Lender, NMLS number 373031. Your body is a masterpiece designed to heal itself from within. Learn how to maximize your health by tuning in to Phenomenal Health with me, Dr. Ryan Finn. Saturdays at 2.30, experience true health today and call Finn Chiropractic at 386-7700. Hi, this is Justin Colvin, founder of the Medicare Help Desk. I routinely speak to seniors who are overwhelmed by the multitude of coverage options available to them. That's why I created the Medicare Help Desk radio show. Tune in every Sunday at 1130 a.m. where I provide clear answers to all your questions about Medicare. A cup of Joe, Java, Brew, Go-Go Beans, Brainwater, Liquid Lightning, Wakey Wakey Juice, whatever you call your cup of coffee, you're missing out. If it's not Grassroots Coffee. At GrassrootsCoffee.com, you'll find an easy way to order the best roasted coffee beans available. It's very simple. Choose the blend you want and how you want it ground, and the bag you receive will have the date your beans were roasted and packaged on it, all written by hand and signed by the roast master himself. You'll know that's as fresh as it's. You can get Grassroots outside of your house also at some of your favorite restaurants in town. Next time you're out to eat, try asking for Grassroots Coffee by name because there's a good chance they will have it for you. And if you own a business, Grassroots Coffee has options to stock your break rooms with all the productivity powder your team needs. Plus, like some other options that you'll find at work, Grassroots Coffee actually is a part of our community. Get to grassrootscoffee.com today and get yourself a treat. Some locally owned, locally roasted, and locally loved Grassroots Coffee. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness, two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and North. Nineteen plus years has our friends at Zaxby's been a Golden Chief booster. That's a a, a good thing. Doling out delicious chicken. Platter maybe in order this week. Maybe maybe Friday a little celebration. I'll grab some platters for the family. And uh, yes, I will have the spicy Zach sauce to go, please. That uh, makes sense. Friday is a celebration because you've got spring break on the other side of it. Is is that why you would be doing the celebration? Yeah, yeah, the kids will be excited. They'll 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 have some time off now and kind of everybody gets to relax. I'll probably take a couple of days next week. Not sure yet. Uh, but you know what? I won't be doing. I won't be. I'm gonna set the over under at four and a half. <laughs> what days? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, you know what? Hey, I saw where Miami started spring football, and I couldn't decide. Would I rather have that be the case? for Florida Street right now, or to wait it out like we're having to wait it out because uh, the later in the 
month that it gets, the closer you know, it, before you know it, Tom, we'll be talking about April. And if you've made it to nearly April, well, it's it's almost go time, buddy. <laughs> the advisory we got today, for those wondering, we'll have some Florida State news for you on this front in just a few days. The final tour of duty session of the winter conditioning program is going to be open to the media. That's us. And it'll begin at 6 a.m. this Thursday. And I will be up and at him. It's my time of day, Tom Lang. That is for some of the other guys on the beat, it's going to be tough sledding for them, not this guy. I'll be loving life, sipping a cup of joe as we walk into the indoor practice facility this Thursday. And uh, obviously, they're giving us all the instructions because of the parking availability or a lack thereof with construction. Uh, but we have to make our way around Dick Hauser Stadium and Joe N. Graff Field there, Joe N. Graff Field, and, and do all those things. But I'll be there bright and early. Speaking of which, I think I think there's further uh, momentum growing, certainly rumblings uh, in various articles. Matt Baker wrote one uh, that the uh, baseball stadium could, in fact, be moved and rebuilt and all that other stuff. And you know that that dump has been needed to be mowed down for some time. And I've talked about it at length, much to the chagrin of those over there. But it's time. Lipstick on a pig doesn't work. It's time to go. New stadium, everybody. Yeah, you'll get to walk through it again on Thursday morning and, and remark on that in your brain or say it out loud so everybody mm -hmm. knows where you stand on the issue. Maybe maybe you could tell Derek uh, he's got nothing to do with baseball. He's the FSU yeah. football SID, like day-to-day -day operations, not much to work with with baseball. Derek, when are you going to get on this, my man? When are you going to fix this baseball state? you got to build it. We, maybe we'll take some of the bricks that we took out. We were doing the, uh, the slideshow at the top of the hour of Doke Campbell and all the renovations that are going on in there. There's a lot, that brick wall is gone right now behind the home sideline. It is weird to look at, isn't it? It's so weird. It is. It's hollowed out. Maybe we can use some of the bricks there. Get it started. Just just have a little spot in the IM fields. We could see that from Indigo. We do the pregame show later on this year. You say, look at those bricks. That is where home plate is going to be of the new ballpark. I've had a vision for this thing for a very long time. Now, they have not reached out to me. They have not asked what it is that I have uh, painted in my mind for a Florida State baseball stadium, but I have a lot of ideas. And maybe, just maybe, if I say this on the air now, there's always powers that be over there that are tuned in. They might, they may reach out. They may say, hey, hey, we got you. What is it you want here? You've been advocating for this for 10 years. I started talking about a new state. Listen, I used to love Hauser, and I still do. We will always have a soft spot in my heart just because – I talked about doing homework out in the left field bleachers in the early 90s. You know, it's like all that kind of stuff. I, I, there are a lot of good times there, a lot of great moments there. But it is, you know, it's 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 dilapidated. The innards are not good. Stadiums of programs, lesser programs, I might add, are have surpassed Florida State's baseball uh, for some time now. It's maddening. When you talk to Eric Llewellyn, goes on the road for all these games, um, you see it. It's crazy. You watch uh, time and again, and you're like, well, why does why does Wake Forest have a better stadium? Why does so and so have a better stadium? Why does so? It dr drives me nuts. So maybe it'll happen. I know there's a lot on our plate. I, see I don't know that it's anytime soon. This is going to happen. There's a question from an old dad in the Heisen Leak chat about which side would home plate sit on. Uh, well, I, I don't know what exact direction it would be in terms of. of where it faces except to say that college town would be in the outfield right it would be beyond the outfield walls i would think yeah because the sun sets as we know from doing those pregame shows <laughs> the sun sets over doke uh from the perspective of college town so you can't be facing that way that's crazy it's, the outfield backdrop has to be college town i would think it but just makes a ton of sense i mean florida state you know you think about the the properties they own over there, you think about the boosters and everything else. How perfect is it to bleed out from college town into the baseball field? You have people coming and going, buying food and drinks, having a great a festive atmosphere right there. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, you couldn't have it facing Doak, where Doak is the backdrop, unless you angle it in such a way or you build a second level, because then the batters would just be staring into the sun, which you can't have. Yeah. So yeah. We'll see, we'll see what happens, but it is going to happen, and I wonder if they're going to give you a berm, if they're going to give you a party deck in your honor. Is it going to be the plaza level? Is it going to be 
you know, maybe the spot that you could put your trucks and tailgate out in left field like they do in some SEC ballparks. What do you want named after you in the new ballpark? Probably the tailgate lot. Something festive. Uh, some something where people can sit around and have a nice cold beer and get ready to take in some baseball. I mean, I'm a traditionalist when it comes to that sort of thing with baseball, right? If there's an area just beyond the left field fence where folks are hanging out, tossing back some cold ones, maybe having a hot dog or two before going into the ball game, just, you know, it's, it's, it's both friendly, uh, family friendly, but also festive for students. Like everybody can mingle and have a good time. You call it Cameron Alley, maybe? It's got a nice ring to it. Cameron Alley's fine. Uh, uh, when the when the time's right, maybe Irish Chappelle has uh, a suggestion. He joins us now. Irash Fell, Warchant.com. Ira, if they're going to name something with the new baseball stadium after me, as is suggested by the, the, the many listeners right now, um, what would you want named after me, Ira, uh, for the new baseball stadium? Wow, that's a uh, you know, maybe um, the beer, yeah, like, the rate, the the PA. Uh, yeah, oh. the whole press box. I don't know. Yeah, that seems excessive. I don't know that I, I need know. the press box. How about just a beer stand? <laughs> not a bad, <laughs> not a bad. But do you have do you have one particular beer stand that's your big, some your favorite since they started uh, selling? No, no. Um, any of them will suffice. Uh, I don't. I would think I'd want something maybe more around the, well, we could use the Jeff Cameron beer garden out in left field or something. Maybe that's not bad. Or, um, again, we could rename the foul poles, like the dong poles. I like the dong poles. Cause you, you, you've, you've kind of really brought dong to the uh, lexicon, I think. So that would be a tip of the cap to me without having to use my name. But, I mean, you know, everybody would just be understood. Yeah. Or it could be the Jeff Cameron dong poles. <laughs> Maybe you could have a little caricature of your face from your logo on the yeah. on each on each dong pole. On the top of the dong pole, it could be yeah. my face. That's fantastic, by the way. <laughs> Ridiculous. Hey, I read on warchant.com, that's where I read it. Um, where you talked an awful lot about Florida State at the combine and the success the players had and Mike Norvell's opportunity, obviously, to uh kind of highlight the program, and I agreed with you. I, I thought this weekend was not only validation for this team and these players, but it is another step towards a higher profile for Florida State football. And that caused me, reading your article, guys, go there, read it, warchant.com. You'll see the headline, Five Big Takeaways from Florida State's Impressive NFL Combine Performance by Ira Chaffel. Uh I kind of took a step back and started thinking about going into this next season there aren't that many teams, Ira, with a higher profile right now or a better, you know, some people would call it a Q rating or something like that. You know, like Texas is really well thought of right now, obviously. They're upwardly mobile. They just had a bunch of success. They've got a bunch of players going in the draft. They're going to have a good team next year. Obviously, Georgia is probably still the best program in all of college football. Uh I think Michigan takes a big step back. I know they are 30 and three of their last three seasons and they've, you know, won a national championship or the invitational. So they, they've got to be included, but there aren't too many teams before you get to Florida state. When you think about programs with real momentum who are now on the cusp of having several seasons in which they're successful, but also churning out elite NFL talent, Florida state's going to have perhaps double digit people go into the league next year too. And that'd be back to back years if they do that. Yeah, I think it's definitely, uh, you know, it, it's it's nice that it happened now. And, and it's kind of, you know, the again, what happened in the Orange Bowl was definitely a, a, a chink in the armor. You know, it's definitely something that, that made Florida State look bad. It gave them a black eye, uh, not just getting left out of the playoff, but then the, the way they play, you know, the, the yeah. way half the team played in the Orange Bowl. Um, so it's kind of good to get this back, you know, trending in the right direction. I think the draft will continue to do that. I think at Pro Day, when they have a great turnout, maybe you see more NFL coaches that we've seen in recent years show up at Pro Day, just legitimizing the program. Um, and then, you know, yeah, as the excitement builds towards next season and people really look at this Florida State roster and what they brought in and what they've got coming back and, you know, maybe your top 10 team going into the season again and, and all of that's, you know, really positive. Uh, but then it's going to be, you know, really stacking it uh, with another really strong season. I mean, I think that's going to be the key to it. You know, if you, if you, if you fall back and, and it, look, that may kind of go to the idea of why they approach the portal, the way they approach the portal. 
Um, you know, there was a time where I think a lot of us thought, well, this year may be kind of a loading up year for next season. And that's not the approach they took. They went out and they got DJ Uyunglele, and they went out and got a lot of elite transfers on, on offense and defense to try to make another run. And if you can do that, then that, again, just shows some staying power. And then, like you said, you followed up with another strong draft next year. And, and you're kind of you're kind of rolling at that point. You got that inertia going, which you would assume would you know only help in recruiting and further player retention and acquisition. It didn't hurt, certainly. And Mike made sure that he retweeted it and had all the uh, moments that highlighted the successes for these young men. I think he's legitimately happy for them, too, because they put in the work and got this thing turned around so much faster for him. But it certainly doesn't hurt the reputation of the program to have players like Trey Benson and others say that Florida State changed their lives. Mm. I yeah, mean, no it, question. And yeah, and then, uh, you know, the way Jared Verse talked about Florida, right. the way. Uh, even a guy like Jaheim Bell, who I wouldn't say is a poster child for um, a guy who's going to stay at your program a long time. Again, those guys, Verse and uh, Trey Benson, we knew how committed they were to Florida State by the fact that they came back for a second year when they could have left a year earlier, or they could have entertained offers from other schools. And so they, you know, they clearly were bought into Florida State. But even Jaheim Bell, who was only here for, you know, basically less than a year. Yeah. Uh, you know, basically did the same thing on social media as well. And, and yeah, that. That I didn't mention that in the article, but but it's a great point that a lot of these guys they've been great ambassadors for Florida State, even though they maybe not all of them stayed at Florida State for four or five years. It's the number one, uh, I think, asset to Mike Norvell's ability to sell this as a transfer portal destination. It's not just that the players came here, won a bunch of games; they came here and got better once they were here and won a bunch of games and have a lot of really good things to say. There are very few examples of any of the players that came here and played meaningful snaps. Many, Most of the people that have come here, they've hit. That's the other part of this. They've hit on these uh, on these pickups. It's not just that they got guys to fill spots. They've, they've hit home runs with a lot of these guys. Uh, you know, obviously, Trey Benson is, is a good one to look at, but so is Johnny Wilson. And so you can go on. Kier Thomas was a really, really good player. We can go on and on and on. Um, so now it just gets that much easier, I would think. And, and in a time where it's hard to retain players and, and roster retention is a topic at the end of every season, uh, you have so many factors that go into it, but you have a very active and, and strong collective, a head coach who seems to have navigated it nearly perfectly, and they have not had a single disruption in the locker room, almost guarantees year over year this is going to continue. Yeah, you definitely like to think. I mean, now you've got so many guys who have kind of, seen the way it should be and they can kind of set the extent set the standard uh and the example for for new guys that come in i also think you know you, you're kind of uh to me bringing in guys from alabama and georgia and even lsu mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not like brian kelly's a, a slouch i mean you, know, you, you brought in seven players from really elite programs that are run the right way and you you know you assume those guys don't need to be coached up you know they know what they're so that's half of the guys you brought in and then a bunch of the other guys you brought in like uh Lolo Hea and mm -hmm. these other guys have already had tremendous success so you know they know what they're doing so yeah man it's, it's it's I think this is to me this transfer class is a step up in terms of a, a talent that they brought in but also in terms of these aren't guys who are gonna have to learn how to do it the right way most almost I'd say almost all of these guys came from either successful situations individually or as a team and it's not going to take a lot to kind of assimilate them and you've already got things going in the right direction so i think this spring you know they should really be able to hit the ground running i think the the best thing that mike did in regards to getting this thing flipped convincing people in the transfer portal to come to florida state trusting him and his staff they'll win some games they'll get this turned around they'll elevate their status for the draft all those things is that he never – and he, he there are lots of ways to do this. Some kids just want to be told they're great. Some kids just want to be told they're starting. Some kids just want the money. Some kids want all three of those things that I just mentioned. But at the forefront of all of this has been Mike saying, this place is not for everybody. I'm going to make you work your ass off. Yeah, he's made that pretty clear. And then, and then the, the players uh, back that up. But, but at the end of the day, it, it's smart because it's – the reality is if any player makes it to this level and wants to succeed in, in this sport and wants their career in the sport, that's what they need. They need to do that. Like it's, there's no shortcut. And so being front of, up front about it, it's kind of, um, 
I think it gives him some some just validity in terms of when he talks to the players that they oh you're not BSing me because they know it. Even the guys who maybe are attracted to a coach who doesn't sell it that way, in the back of their man, mind, they really know what the truth is, and they're going to have to work their ass off to be successful. And so the fact that he and Alex Atkins and the guys on the staff preach that, I think it makes them all feel like, okay, these guys are straight up. And, you know, that's something they, they want to play for. I think it's cool, too, because it's a nice way of being compared. I'm not saying he stole it because I think they're both right. But we've seen that speech that Nick Saban gives where he says kids operate under the illusion that they have a choice. Mm-hmm. He's like, they're, they don't have a choice because anybody who's ever made it to the next level had to do these things, these specific things in order to be successful. So you don't have a choice. You can't just screw around. Like there's no other way. But when you are kind of echoing that sentiment and it's noted that it's a very similar philosophy to the most successful college football coach in the history of the game, it's a good idea. It was smart in retrospect. <laughs> and, and, well, and, and, dude, and, it, and, it, and it works if you win. Yeah. You know? and that's, that's the thing. Like, you know, the first year or two when he was kind of, you know, beating that drum, he had to get a lot of faith from a lot of these players. And they had to, you know, think, okay, well, he did win at Memphis. And right. you know, we, we want to believe. Uh, but, man, when you have that 10-win season two years ago and then you follow that up with 13 wins, now, man, you know, it's a lot easier to get guys to understand. Brother, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Be well. See you, Jeff. All right, take care. It's uh, Irish Chappelle, Warchant.com. Enjoy that article. There's a lot more to it than I just referenced there. By the way, guys, it was not lost on me in the midst of my conversation that you had some great ideas in the uh, Heisen Link Law Firm chat. And know that I believe this is the one I want. Hearing Lulu have to say that someone hit a ball off the Jeff Cameron dong pole would be amazing. If if he had to say, I think that's off the... uh, the head of the dong pole there, the Jeff Cameron face there. That's a goodness gracious. <laughs> That's a poke. It's the Jeff Cameron show. 93, three real talk radio war chant TV. Local news now. More taxpayer dollars could go toward affordable housing in Leon County. Thursday night, members of the Blueprint Intergovernmental Agency voted to allow Blueprint funds to be used for affordable housing. It represents a significant shift in the scope of the board, which was originally created to fund infrastructure projects like parks and roads. City Commissioner Jack Porter made the motion to start a process that would allow the board to use infrastructure funds to purchase land and build mixed income affordable rental housing. It passed 8 to 4. Thursday's decision was a big win for the Capital Area Justice Ministry, a group of congregations in Tallahassee that has spent months advocating for this change. The process to allow Blueprint to fund affordable housing is lengthy. In addition to Thursday's vote, it will require two public hearings, recommendations from three committees, and a supermajority vote from the board. This is Rachel Anae with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by McNamara Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at McNamaraSystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Partly cloudy this afternoon with a slight chance for storms. Highs level off around 79, southeast winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Slight chance of thunderstorms tonight. Lows level off around 61, overcast skies. Overcast skies tomorrow. Storms of likely high temperatures reach up to 72. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Currently 75. Hey, no fans. Our partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF. Your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. So everybody knows, Eddie, that you are a spectacular cook. Of course they know that. If they go into bumpers, the food is always good. I mm-hmm. mean, everything on the menu. Mm-hmm. Everything at Gordo's is delicious. I always, of course, get the what, the bungalow chungla, as I call it. The bungalow chung, Jeff? Is that the, what, what is the pork? The bunk on the chung, oh, Jeff. Okay, the bunk on the chung. It's delicious. All these things, all the items, yes. everything you do, a, a master cook. But, sir, I would ask you, what is a skill that you possess that you're particularly proud of 
that nobody would know and that uh, that you could share with us here. Growing hair, Jeff. Growing hair. You're an asshole. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. fans expect somewhat of an FSU drop-off this upcoming year, but they're wrong. They frequently are. I don't think Florida State's going to drop off. I think Florida State's going to be very good next year. I think that uh, in a weird way, they could be fueled by the snub. They're still angry. They have a right to be, but they're also good, and they reloaded in a lot of areas, and I think they have a chance. I've said this repeatedly. They have a chance to be a more consistent offense. Um, They have a chance uh, just by virtue of of health. Uh, They have a chance to to be a better football team, I think. It's to me, I know this is the time of year where everybody is optimistic because what's the point of being pessimistic this far away from the start of a season and you haven't had a chance to see spring football. So hope springs eternal. It's why we love spring training. Everybody thinks their team has a chance to be pretty good before you've amassed 90 losses. Um, but I, 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 I do believe Florida state legitimately. I, and now, Hey, listen, I certainly reserve the right to change my mind. If we get out there in spring football begins and it's an unmitigated disaster. I'm not going to come in here and just try to match my lofty predictions and lie to you. If, if I, if I think they look terrible and there's a long way to go, I'm going to say it, but I suspect they're going to be good, Tommy. And I think they're going to be pretty uh, Now listen, there'll be some, I do think there'll be some moments where they're trying to get it on the same page because you have so many new receivers and a new quarterback. So if there's going to be moments where it's choppy, it ought to happen, by the way, in spring football, that's fine. I'm not going to hit the alarm bell. But I I just think they've infused more talent to a roster that is growing from a talent perspective year in and year out. And if you can control the line of scrimmage, if you can win on the offensive and defensive lines, I think you're adding to these skill positions on both sides of the ball again. I think at receiver, at running back, at linebacker, at corner, I just, there's a lot there for them to work with and they've gotten better each year. I don't suspect they'll take a big step back at all. If, if at all, it's going to be just such a different team because you don't have apparent stars in droves. Like you did this past year. You don't have those cornerstone players set it and forget it. Starters, all conference awards, preseason watch lists, like favorites to win things. You just don't have that. But by the end of the year, you might you might end up back in the same place because of the, the the journey that they're going to go on. I'm so jealous of you guys who get to go to the tour of duty on Thursday morning uh, because we are allowed this year to take photos, uh, which which is the same, but video as well. So that's very cool. Um, we're going to have a lot of that coverage on Warchant TV and Warchant.com. But I'm going to be just like everybody out there in the chat, like, all right, what does this kid look like? What does this kid look like? Because Florida State, to me, I was I have the list, and we talked about this at the outset of the show. I mean, when you include all the way up and down the lineup in, in specialists, like Mastro probably gets invited to the combine next year as one of the you know six or seven specialists because he's a really good punter. Florida State could be 15 strong, 16 strong next year at the Combine, and I don't think that's a crazy projection. You don't have a lot of the frontline stars yet, but you've got a lot of options, and what you've also done is you've brought in so much more competition at different positions for those jobs, and competition is what can fuel this thing to turn into a 10, 11, or 12-win season, and I can't wait for that to start here pretty soon. I mean... So many jobs were locked up this time last year. You knew who the starters were going to be. So many jobs this year are up for grabs, and you don't—you have, have no idea what the first and second line 
of the depth chart is going to look like. I, I can't wait to see how it all plays out. I think it's important that competition is – listen – everybody's nervous about some guys that haven't been proven yet, but they're not nervous about a lack of talent. So you saw Jordan Travis's quote about Hakeem Williams. And he said uh, that he's going to be a special, special player next year. I agree, Jordan. I think he's going to be now until he does it. Everybody's going to, you know, I think be somewhat reluctant to just jump all in on Florida State being more productive across the board on offense because you're going to need a guy like Hakeem uh, to, or Destin. You're going to need somebody like that to take a pretty monumental jump. But you know who takes those kinds of jumps? Really talented, badass athletes that have been in the system and know what it takes and is putting in the work. And all of those guys have shown the willingness to do that. I believe they were on the cusp of doing that at the end of this past year. But like everybody else on this effing roster, they got hurt. So, I mean, it was a remarkable run of injury, bad injury luck. But I think Hakeem was really this close to being a name that everybody knows around the country just a year ago. They were going to him, I've said this a lot, in big moments, and then he gets hurt. And that stinks because they needed him. They certainly needed him on this in the back half of the year when Keon's out there running a 7540. So, I mean, that they needed him. And yet they still found a way to win, which is great. And namely, that was because of the defense. Well, the entire offense has position battles. I mean, like, you know, DJ's going to be your quarterback, but Brock isn't coming, you know, he got a taste of it. Brock is not going to just sit idly by and say, well, DJ has been uh, two power five institutions, good players. So I'll, I'll have to wait my turn. Like Brock is coming for that job. He probably won't win it. So that quarterback position is pretty much determined running backs wide open. Uh, how many touches is Roy Dell going to get versus Kazaya versus Joe Feely? Does Cam Davis push this early in his career? He's going to push. He is going to push. He's going to play and he's going to be good wide receiver top to bottom. They're going to be, I mean, you're fighting for reps. So many, it's in the Heisen Lincoln chat, Optimus Climb, nine four-star or better wide receivers. Nine blue-chip wide receivers on this team. Like Malik Benson is likely going to be one of your guys. He's a freak athlete, and Alabama didn't have an offense that suited a second or a third read. Malik Benson is going to be in that rotation. But, man, what about Destin Hill? Huge year for Destin, huge year for Kentron. Like, some of these guys might leave that. Kentron, real quick, sorry. Kentron's a guy that I continually overlook partly because he's a guy who's had so many injuries. I, I, I need you to stay healthy. Kentron. I know you're not trying to get hurt. It's hard. It's hard to trust a guy who's always hurt. Um, you know, that, that availability is important. <laughs> I need you to be out there every Saturday because we got glimpses. We caught moments of what he is and we have over the last three seasons, we've caught these m- moments, right? Remember yeah. Portier made some big plays against Louisville a couple years ago. And then he, you know, we've seen this guy, hey, in the game against Georgia. So a couple of highlight catches. Yeah. So yeah. He's, he's there. Sneaky speed. You talked to AZ about that. He's a sneaky, difficult cover. I did. Yeah. It's he's sneaky. You don't think about him. He's not the first guy you think of, but it, he makes it hard on a corner to cover in space one on one. And some of these guys at, at wide receiver might leave after spring because they just see the depth charts too loaded and time's running out. Like that could happen and probably will happen. It will happen. They're going to lose some guys. Every program that's worth a damn loses guys. And the way the modern game is, you're going to lose guys at the end of spring when they when the writing's on the wall. Tight end two, wide open. Kyle Morlock. Who's I mean Jackson West is a guy that got more and more reps towards the end of last season, but you've got a stud freshman coming in and he fits this offense perfectly. And you got some other guys in the mix there, too. The offensive line, how they're going to sort that issue out, who are your two tackles, where you want Darius Washington to play, where can he help you the most? Is there a challenger at center? It's Maurice, Maurice's job until his eligibility is gone, but maybe somebody challenges for that particular role. And then defense, a lot of depth jobs open. Like You know who your badass three defensive linemen are, but I mean, who's going to be the D-end opposite Patrick Payton? You've got a lot of really good candidates on campus to be at the D-end opposite Patrick Payton. Marvin Jones Jr., probably, right, we would think? Well, but you got Sione and you got Duro Jaye. Yeah, that's we, you got yeah. three options. And, and then at linebacker, tons of reps out there, one safety position, one corner position. Man, this is just this is going to be so much fun. Like, last year's team, you knew it was going to be good. I, I agree with you. I'm bullish on this group. 
but you don't know how they're going to get there. You knew how how they were going to get there if they succeeded last year and who was going to be the principal reason why. They've got a chance. It will be uh, – I can't wait to start documenting this. This is why when I saw Miami had already started spring football, I was kind of like, man, I really wish we were right now. I am I am pumped. There are a lot of answers uh, that we want to you know find, but there's not a, a dearth of talent. Uh, that, so you know somebody within this grouping is going to make a difference. Can this other kid, for example, take a big step forward? I just saw in the chat, Vendravius Jacobs, oh, well, buddy, you know, nobody's saying that guy's praises more than I did last year uh, after each practice, but he was in the doghouse half the year. And, you know, that's a kid that's got to get it together. I mean, that's the way I phrase that without getting into the details, but you, you've got to be accountable, dependable, to your program, your teammates, your coaches, and to yourself. And if you do those things, well, there's no question about his ability. I mean, it's an elite skill set that he has to make the impact that he did the first few weeks of practice. We were all kind of struck by his talent and athleticism. Go all the way back to that spring a year ago where he was so good. But obviously – we didn't really get an opportunity to see him out there very consistently at all because he, you know, wasn't, uh, I, I think, doing the things that allow you to get on the field on a day to day basis. Good work, you out of you, Tom. Good work out of you, director. Thanks to everybody in the chat. We appreciate you as always. Be well. Have a good night. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Peace.